So as you guys just heard, um, our Youth Advisory Board meeting, um, coalition meeting for uh, June is being recorded right now. Um, it is June 3rd at 7 p.m. And according to the governor's executive orders, this hopefully will be our last uh, Zoom meeting and we can fresh in the fall. Um, so I just want to make sure I just have everybody accounted for. So just let me know if I didn't call your name. I have Dylan, I have Allison, I have Barbara Rue, I have Bonnie, I have Colleen, I have Eric and Barbara Bellis. I have Kathy, I have Maria, I have Michelle, I have Patrick, I have Sarah, I have Tyler and I have Pam. Did I miss anybody? Wonderful, all right. Um, so Dylan, whenever you want to call the meeting to order, it's all yours. Okay, I would like to call the meeting to order. Thank you, Dylan. At 7.08. Okay. We can do the minutes next and then I just want to do uh, an introduction right after that. Okay. Uh, approval of the minutes. Do we need a motion to accept the minutes from the previous meeting? From the main meeting, correct. I make a motion to accept the minutes Second. as presented in the email. Okay, and then Barbara, did you second that? Yes. Okay. And then um, before we move on to the rest of the agenda, I just wanted to introduce someone to the group. Um, Allison Nadeau um, is our new prevention um, program coordinator here for the town in the town of Weathersfield, our uh, grant funded position with the Drug Free Communities Grant. Um, Allison started this week, so we're really excited to have her here. Um, and I'll let her do a brief little hello and introduction to the group. Um, and then I'm sure she can probably see everybody and who's, what everyone's name is and stuff. So I won't go unless everybody wants to take a second to kind of just introduce themselves, if that's okay with you. Um, so Erica, I, I, did we vote on the minutes to well, accept them? Can you not say all? Oh, okay. We had a first from Eric, a second from Barbara Rue, and then I'm sorry, go ahead. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Sorry. Just want to get that out of the way. No, I appreciate that. I got so excited to introduce Allison. I just jumped the gun. <laughs> no, that's more exciting than what I just said, <laughs> but you will appreciate it later when you wonder if there was a vote or not. Exactly. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so Allison, if you don't mind um, saying hi to the group and kind of give any information that you kind of want to share with us and a little bit about yourself. Um, my name is Allison. I am the new prevention coordinator, as you guys know. I have a background in public health and my master's degree in public health and prevention work is something that I'm really passionate about and especially with uh, adolescents and youth age. So I'm really excited to kind of get things underway and see what happens. Um, when I'm not working, I can be found adventuring in the woods or at the gym. So those are two fun facts. And I have a cat. <laughs> and you Welcome like the out. tropics. Oh, yes. Yes. I'm actually um, in Hawaii. We'll say this is Hawaii. <laughs> oh, I love Hawaii. Nice. Me too. All right. Thank you, Allison. So we're really excited. I know Allison just started this week, but we've hit the ground running and uh, she's actually in a full week of training next week for uh, um, all for the grant. So um, no wasting any time here. Absolutely. Um, but thank you for uh, taking the time and I think if we wanted to just go quick and see if anybody wants to share anything about themselves on the coalition. Um, I know you know myself, obviously. Um, Barbara, Barbara Rue, did you want to share anything or just do an Hi, Allison. Um, I've been on this board forever, literally. Mm -hmm. Child welfare and I have two grandsons and my grandson and daughter who live with me have two cats, one of whom follows me everywhere. 
<laughs> and I'm going to go off video because I'm eating my dinner. I think it's rude to eat on camera. <laughs> Thank you, Barbara. Um, um, Maria, would you like to go next? Uh, sure. I'm Maria and I've lived in town for over 30 years. Ooh, makes me feel old, but uh, it's a lovely town and um, I enjoy being on the Youth Advisory Board for among other reasons, because it's about helping, we hope, uh, young people. Because, you know, the adage that the future is in their hands, because it is, our futures are in their hands. And as much as we can do to help children who become young adults and young adults who become adults to prosper and be educated and acquire the skills they need to be successful, it helps everyone long-term not just short term. And welcome. Thank you. You and the palm trees. <laughs> I was born on the island, so I love palm trees. Mm -hmm. And no, I'm not in San Francisco. If you're inquiring, I just love the Golden Gate Bridge and San Francisco, mm -hmm. which is not quite as warm as Hawaii or any of the islands you can think of with the palm trees, except for maybe Ireland that has palm trees. You're smiling, but people, a friend of mine told me the first trip I made to Ireland, don't be surprised you shall see palm trees. And she was right. It was a little surprising. <laughs> but then I remembered it's an island. And they get the cross breezes, so it's warm enough for palm trees. Awesome. Fun fact. Thank you, Maria. No uh, problem. Dylan, do you want to go next? Uh, yeah, my name is Dylan Knapp, and I'm a senior at uh, Weathersfield High School. Thank you. Sarah, do you want to go next? Sure, I'm Sarah Briggs and I'm the teen librarian at the Weathersfield Library. Um, thank you. Bonnie, do you wanna go next? Sure, hi Allison, welcome. I'm Bonnie Smith. I know we've met in passing. Um, the evaluation consultant for the Weathersfield Drug-Free Communities Grant, but I also live here and have some kids in the district and a cat and some dogs and all those things. Thank you. Colleen, do you want to go next? Did I miss her? She no, she's talking, but we can't hear her. Okay, we can go next. Oops, I'm sorry. Oh, well, that's okay. Um, I have a daycare here in town. I'm Colleen Keene. And I have three kids, two that have gone through the system and one that's currently in the system. So that's me. Perfect. And then um, can we have um, Eric? And I think that's you and Barb. Okay, hey, I'll go first. Uh, my name is Eric Knapp. I'm a Weathersfield police officer. I'm currently assigned to the Weathersfield High School as a resource officer. And I like long walks on the beach. Here's Barb. Hi, welcome. My name is Barbara. I am a parent in town. I have two boys that are juniors at the high school. I also am a secretary to the principal at the high school. And it's a great fit because I'm able to support this group, both as an employee in the system, as well as a parent in town. We welcome you to the group. Thank you. Um, um, Councilman Tyler, are you still there? I am. Welcome yeah. aboard. My mm -hmm. name is uh, Tyler. I'm on the town council and I was actually on this board before I was on the council. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tyler. Um, Michelle, do you wanna go next? Hi, Allison, welcome. I'm Michelle, I'm a case manager for JRB. Welcome to the team. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we got, and then we have Kathy and Patrick, which I I believe you've met. Well, I've definitely met Kathy, but um, Patrick or Kathy, is there anything you wanted to say or add? Erica, I'm here too. I'm with Colleen. I had to, my phone wasn't working. Oh, that's why you were checking <laughs> me. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> gotcha. I'm sorry. No, no, you're good. We're, we're happy that you're here. Um, so Patrick, you're good. Yeah, so okay. I'm Kim Harrison and I'm just, 
I'm the school psychologist at the high school. Thank you, Pam. <laughs> that was funny. I'm like, where is she coming out from right now? It's um, like Saturday Night Live. <laughs> well, thank you everyone for uh, the warm introductions. Um, we're looking forward to Allison working with our coalition and uh, ready to hit the ground running this, uh, this summer and into the new school year. So with that being said, we can move into all the other stuff to kind of get that out of the way with like the youth service, uh, the financial and youth service reports, if that's good with you, Dylan. Okay. Um, youth services report. So we did issue you um, a thousand dollar check today actually we presented it um, uh, to the Yabbit scholarship winner she was very excited it was uh, a job well done she was uh, they were they conducted the interview process as many of you know from our last meeting um, and the candidate stuck out and we were able to process the check and get it to her today physically and Colleen I think you have the pictures right that you're going to post up I believe actually Barb has them, but okay. she's going to send them to me. Perfect. So we'll get those pictures up on our uh, Facebook. <laughs> um, us us uh, giving out the. Um, so our our current balance after the thousand dollars is two thousand four hundred and seventy nine dollars and sixty seven cents. We're good to move on, Dylan, if you want to. Okay. Uh, Drug-free communities evaluator. Thank you. Bonnie, I wanted to give you a time to uh, touch base if you wanted to, if you didn't have to for the whole meeting, if you wanted to share anything, if you were, were going to say for the whole meeting, that's great, but I didn't know if you wanted to um, mention anything or have time to ask any questions of the group. Oh, thank you, Erica. Um, nothing really specific, and you'll hear more about it as this goes on. Um, a lot of what's happening with the grant right now actually is weighing on Erica and now Allison <laughs> in terms of preparing for the next fiscal year. So I do want to note that we'll have to, according to grant requirements, do another student survey in the fall. Um, and then look at the action plan together. But that's really now in Allison's wheelhouse. So I look forward to connecting with Allison once she's got through her training next week and we can talk about some next steps. That's all for me. Thank you. And with that being said, um, we are still, now that we have Allison on board, um, my goal is to send out a doodle poll um, probably by the end of this week, beginning of next week to um, figure out what day we'll kind of hold our, uh, our retreat for our coalition over the summer. Um, so we'll take a couple hours out and hopefully many of you can join and we can really start diving into some planning for the new school year and what that's gonna look like for our coalition. So stay tuned for that. I think doodle polls will probably work out the best to kind of figure out what, um, what time frame is best for majority of the group? All right. All you back to you, Dylan. Okay. Uh, membership. Do you want to? Can we skip to the? We'll just get the youth service report out of the way, if that's okay. Uh, okay. Uh, youth services report. I don't know if Patrick has to jump off. That's just why I want to give him a chance. I know we think he has open house tonight too. I actually just pulled in the driveway as this was starting. So I'm caught in my garage right now, but. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. We, uh, we didn't run anything, obviously the whole spring. So it's been pretty quiet in youth services, but I've been in touch with the schools and we did get to go ahead that back next fall, we will be able to go back to normal with all the other after school activities, the ASAP program and Friday night hangout and intramurals and tutoring and all that would be back to normal in the fall. 
and I've already been in touch with the teachers out there about getting some ideas or doing a survey from the kids and what activities they would like. So we'll be putting together some hopefully new and different activities. But that's where we're at right now. Perfect, thank you. Kathy, is there anything you wanted to add for youth services or Park and Rec? No, I just to think that um, with the Park and Rec programs, they're, they're in doing registration right now for a lot of the camps and swim lessons and we'll be opening uh, the pools this summer. So that's kind of what we have to look forward to. Awesome. Um, Michelle, did you want to add anything for uh, JRB Youth Services? So we had our first in-person hearing a couple weeks ago, which was great. Continuous case management. We have a potential new case coming from the middle school with a familiar face. And we've been keeping busy, even through the pandemic. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, okay. And then um, any, any staff from the, the, the high school, any parents want to add anything about youth services or just members of uh, the community want to add anything youth services related? I have a question. Sure. Because we're in Pride Month, what is what is being done at the middle school at the high school to celebrate that? What did, I'm, I'm sorry. What did you say? I'm sorry. The first part. Of uh, this month is Pride Month, oh, Pride and my month. question is: is at the middle school and at the high school? Are there doing any? Is there anything being mm -hmm. done to celebrate this because it is Pride Month? Good question. I don't know. I haven't heard anything. I heard there's signs on the bathroom mirrors that say, don't bully, bully people who are on the LGBTQ spectrum. That's all I heard today. Yeah, I, I can speak of, of the high school a little bit. Hang on, I gotta move. Um, the high school GSA, we have very challenging time getting members in meetings this year mm -hmm. with COVID. And so the kids are really participating kind of via our Google Classroom, um, but there hasn't been much put out um, about Pride Month. We do share with our GSA students all the stuff going on with um, the, I'm drawing a blank on um, the group in Hartford. Um, they have youth events, they have the queer prom. Um, and so our students will know about that. Um, but we don't have much going on school-wide this month. We just saw it raise that. Yeah. Was that the group, True, True Colors was the group? Thank you, Erica. That's exactly what it was. I think somebody else said it and then it sparked. I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. That's the name. <laughs> Well, thank you for sharing. I'm asking because it is the month. We celebrate many other things and it's important to celebrate people's acceptance and bullying is a concern. And I don't have a child, but I can see comments in some of the groups, concerns about children being bullied. And school should be a safe sp space, not a place where you feel that you are there and one of the ways to best address bullying includes educating folks. And my humble example is this. My mother asked me once, what is a transgendered person as an example? She really just wanted to know and she's in her eighties, keep this in mind. My answer was mom, when you're in a public bathroom and you need to go to the bathroom, do you care who used the stall ahead of you? Of course not, there's your answer. They're just people like everybody else. I'm using that, I'm oversimplifying, but it's just, that was my attempt to educate my mom on part of the history. And we unfortunately in across the country have a horrible history of bullying young folks who are discovering their, what their sexuality is. And it's difficult to be a middle school child or high school child anyway. And then to have to be going through the process of figuring out what you are or knowing what you are and, and worrying about how people respond 
is of concern and violence against people of the LGBT community is always a concern and suicide is a big concern. And I don't have to be one of the community or have children who come from that community to be concerned about it. So I'm just putting that out there that my humble suggestion is something more needs to be done. Preventative wise, so we don't have issues moving forward. And to just tag team on what Maria has said in the past couple of days, I've been reading that the mental health issues among children and teenagers coming out of this pandemic are through the roof. Exactly, Barbara. Thank you for both sharing both of those points. Um, I know that in the, our next uh, round of, of youth surveys, um, Bonnie and I had discussed incorporating um, some COVID related questions to kind of um, get some data around behavioral health needs in the community. So I think that that will be um, that'll be very helpful in us planning for what what is needed with our youth in, in both the middle school and the high school. Right, Bonnie, that sounds about right. Yeah. Yep, you got it. <clears throat> I think that I just got an email today or yesterday that I'll share that has either a PowerPoint or the text of um, a behavioral health event that was held by DCF that talks about what the needs are. So I can share that once I find it. Perfect, thank you. Well, let me just add one more thing that crosses my mind. In terms of resources and the like, I haven't looked on the White House site, but I suspect since they are celebrating uh, Pride Month that they may have resources and tools for education on the subject. One doesn't have to reinvent the wheel and maybe go on that site because they have it for many other things. I would suspect that they have resources as well as they put up stuff um, and proclamation and support of Pride Month. Although, as far as I'm concerned, Pride Month is any day of the week. Treating people with common decency doesn't have to have a month, but we can highlight that. Just like being kind to each other, whether straight or not. And I'll get off my soapbox. It's just <laughs> an area of con it's just an area of concern because, as Barbara alluded to. The pandemic is very stressful for mental health and adults who have full developed brains, if you will. You can only imagine the impact for a younger person who haven't fully developed in the ways that to even process it. So I'm really concerned about that, as you can probably tell from my comments. And thank you for listening. No, we appreciate the, the feedback and... Um... The, the mention of this. I think it's very important. So thank you for doing that. Um, Sarah, did you want to add anything from the library? Yeah, so uh, we're actually back to our pre-COVID hours. So I'm really excited about that. We're not closing anymore for that gap in the afternoon. Um, so that's 10 to 9 on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, and 10 to 5 on Wednesdays, Fridays and Saturdays. And we're kicking off summer reading on June 14th. So I'm excited about that. Programming is gonna stay virtual for the summer, um, but the rest of our services, study rooms are open, computers are open, browsing is open. Everything else is going to be back on the table essentially. So looking forward to it. Yes, thank you. Tyler, is there anything that you wanted to share with the group? I'd give you a, a chance to to kind of share anything on related to youth services or town council or budget or any of that good stuff? Right now, we're really uh, just plugging away with the budget. Um, this might come as a shocker for a lot of people, but the federal government gave uh, very wordy, murky guidelines on a lot of COVID funding. So a lot of what we're doing right now is actually figuring out what we can actually use federal funds for. Um, 
in terms of specifically youth and social services funding, um, I think we're roughly um, in, a, in an expected spot. Um, I'm gonna walk the tightrope and, and not promise anything, but um, you know that's, that's really our, our main focus right now. And the only other thing I'd add is really a kudos to you guys because um, we're welcoming Allison here and that was work that was done over a long period of time uh, pre-COVID. And as Barbara and Maria were talking about, um, you know, the, the mental and emotional health of, of adolescents right now is at an all-time low. And um, that was really kind of grunt work by you guys for months um, to be able to, to bring someone on. And um, don't want to say lucky timing because the pandemic obviously isn't a lucky event, but um really good work because this is uh, more important than ever now to have, you know, additional people on the team. Thank you, Tyler. Um, is there anyone else I missed that might want to share anything about these services? I don't want to leave anyone out. Good. Okay. So Dylan, we can move on to membership. Um, I just want to say that Dylan is going off to college um, in the fall. So this is probably going to be his last meeting maybe with us. He's more than welcome to come to the retreat, but I'm sure he's going to be super busy. Um, so we just wanted to say on behalf of the our coalition and the Youth Advisory Board, um, thank you for everything, Dylan. Thank you for being part of the group. Um, thank you for leading our meetings. Um, thank you for taking the time volunteering to be part of um, this board and sharing insight um, from the youth. I know this last year has been difficult because we've been on Zoom, but um, you really stuck it in with us and uh, stuck it out with us. And we're really excited um, that you're going on to college and all the, the great things that are, that are ahead of you. Um, we were able to stop by Dylan's house um, this afternoon to give him a little um, thank you and congratulations um, gift um, that the, the group kind of collected um, so that we'd be able to give you a little gift just as a small token of our thank you um, for being part of our group. Um, so I, I welcome if you want to if you want to share or say anything Dylan um, feel free I'll give you a second if not don't worry about it. Yeah just thank you so much for having me it was a lot of fun. <laughs> thank you and kudos and good luck. Yeah. Thank you. We wish you the best. With that, yes, thank you. Said, thank you for your leadership. And I can't say enough. Enjoy college. It'll be a window. You will make memories that will stay with you a lifetime. And there'll be nothing will feel the same. And you learn to be independent. And that could be a little scary, but it's a good kind of scary because you get to figure out what you want to do for the next chapter of your life and you learn to, to live through independence which comes with responsibility but with a little party just the right measure <laughs> dylan this is this is mrs bellis um i want to thank you and congratulate you and also tell the group that i've seen dylan grow up and he's definitely one of the kindest boys that I've ever met. He's developed to be such a young, great man. And we all know he'll do real well in the future, no matter what it is. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you. Thank you. With that being said, that means that we now have an opening on our, we actually have two youth openings. Um, on our official board and then we would love to welcome more. So I just wanna keep that on everyone's radar. Um, for the fall, let's, uh, let's try to figure out, I know we had some, some potentials um, that we're thinking about it. So if anyone has anybody that's, that's definitely interested or would like to you know, be part of a meeting, maybe in September, um, just to feel it out, feel free to let them know um, or reach out during the summer if they have any questions and we can kind of guide them in the direction. Um, but again, thank you, Dylan, for everything. We really appreciate it.
Um, you can you can move on to the next next item if you would like. Okay. Um, are there any new items? I did promise everyone that we'd keep June to a very short meeting. Okay, because the silence is sometimes deafening, but I'll be brief. Um, just want to celebrate Immigrant Month. The president just issued the proclamation celebrating the contributions of immigrants, which by to me include refugees because that's both categories, which is near and dear to my heart because that's how my family came. We came as refugees. And, and just to circle it quickly, just think of it this way, just as an example, the vaccines that have been developed, which are helping us stay safe with COVID, the developers of the vaccines and some of the owners of the companies that make the vaccines are immigrants. So there's an immediate contribution that we benefit from every day. Thank you. Um, if nobody has any other items that they want to mention, I just want to get uh, throw out the September date just to put it on your radar. First meeting um, for the new like school year it will be on Thursday, September second. Um, hopefully, and I I would anticipate if I, you know fingers crossed that we'll be in person. Um, but you'll hear more of that to come. And then please keep a lookout because I'm going to send out a doodle poll like I said earlier, so that we can uh, figure out um, the best timing for our retreat um, to kind of plan our future planning. Um, so anything else, if not, where you can um, end earlier than expected so then everyone else can have an easier night for tonight, but feel free to share anything else if you have anything else you wanna share. I make a motion we adjourn. I'm gonna win. Was that you, Barbara? Yes. And who second that? I don't think there was. It's Eric. I can second that motion. All right. We'll see you all sometime over the summer, hopefully. Yes. Hopefully it'll be nice and we can be outside. We should bring food. Yes, we will definitely have food. That's for sure, Barbara. I like that. One time we had a, a, a youth service advisory meeting we had a potluck salad. We bought a great big bowl and everybody brought a random salad fixing and it was a riot. Yeah, I remember that was funny. <laughs> I like that. Um, all right, well, everyone enjoy the end of the school year, um, the start of the summer, and um, hopefully we'll get a, a portion of your time for either an afternoon or an evening um, in the next, month or so. All right. Take care. Have a good night. Talk to everyone soon. Bye. Good night, everyone. Stay safe. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody. Have a good summer. Bye. Bye. Bye.